Well, hello everyone and welcome to the world's greatest school webinar series number three coming your way and we're going to focus on creating a culture of significance where everyone matters and start a discussion and a thought process of what makes your school a special place. So we are honored to have with us today, Mr. Scott Cavanias. Yay, Scott. Uh, Good morning. Good morning, Scott. And, and the wonderful, amazing, and energetic Jessica Delavine. Good morning. And I'm Park. We are so glad you took the time to join us today, and we look forward to be able to share with you um, some of the, the key parts of the fundamentals of building a, a world's greatest school. We're trying to provide information to you to give you an overview that's based on the far right hand side of the screen, the fundamentals as you see that. And we're working through this process as our last webinar dealt with the shared values and belief statements. And today we're gonna to move up to the next level uh, where we're gonna create a culture of significance. Now understanding what we call the world's greatest pyramid is that there's a series of layers and levels that are instrumental getting to where the magic occurs. And the magic occurs when you take your values and beliefs and it's integrated into everything. And I mean everything that you do, your policies, decisions, practices, procedures, celebrations, and then the instruction. When that hits, then you have magic. Um, so today we're gonna focus on what makes your school a special place. And along that area and those lines is that we, we're gonna talk about the tradition celebrations or your ceremonies, the student staff interaction. How do you connect people to who you are and what you do and how do you get them engaged? And the element of inclusion. So as you, um, Again, if we go back to the point of creating shared beliefs and values that are in place in December and still are relevant during the um, corona e epidemic, we, um, we want to make sure that we stay true to those shared beliefs and values. So how do you connect them? How do you connect students, teachers, and your parents to who you are and what you do to let them know that they are a significant part of your school community. So as we go through this process and we're, we're unveiling these four different layers and levels, our Greatness Inside Out team, we call it GEO for Greatness Inside Out, is about going into schools because we know they have great things that are occurring but what we want to be able to do is make sure that we're bringing that greatness that is within outside. So let's go ahead and get started. The first question is we, we want to um, start this webinar today is, you know, what makes your school a, a special place? So if you were to ask this question, and again, if you're a, a leadership teacher, if you are uh, an administrator, and dealing with, with meetings that you have and you're looking for some content and some great discussions is that start asking the question, what makes your school a special place? And then more important, as you come back and whenever it is that starting point will be, what are you gonna do to ensure that your school is a special place? Because we believe that it's not gonna be the same and it's gonna be very different. So what makes you special through your messaging, who you are, how you respond, and more important, do your actions match your words? Are they aligned? Because that's how you're gonna connect others to who you are and what you do. In the book, uh, Building the World's Greatest uh, High School and Building the World's Greatest Student Leaders, we talk about four categories of students, and I don't like putting labels on, on kids or on people, but there's these categories that 
our, most of our kids will fit into. And they will help us address everything that we're gonna do with creating the significance. The first group is what I refer to as the royal family. All schools have this. It's not a bad thing, but it can be based on how they treat others and respond to others. But the royal family traditionally has a, a variety of groups and each one is unique to a school, but usually it's the football players, it's the basketball players in a high school situation, it's ASB kids, it's your prom kings, queens, those people who are in that, that group of the royal family. The next group um, is what we refer to as the Austins. And this is in the green book, Building the World's Greatest Student Leaders, where we bring Austin into play. Austin was a big boy. He was 10 pounds, 11 ounces. He was advanced. He was um, this kid who took great strides. When he was first born, he went right to three month old. The nurses were looking for places for, to find diapers for, for this young man because um, there was a statement that sort of brought this all together. When they were in the nursery, I overheard two of the nurses talking. They pointed to Austin and they said, now that's a baby. Well, if we look at Austin today, Austin is now 10 years old. And Austin is that kid that he just, he, everybody that he knows just loves Austin and he fits in and he's, he reaches out to kids. Uh, in fact, the teachers sort of put him in that category of special protector. So if somebody's having problems or kids are struggling, the teachers have a tendency to assign, assign Austin to those kids. Who's Austin when he was in first grade? The teacher started her lesson by saying, Austin, could you please turn on the projector? Austin reached in his desk and had the remote control to turn the projector on. Now, how many teachers turn the remotes over to a first grader and making sure that it's happened? So they're these great kids. They're the kids that you wanna take home and just hug and you want them to be a part. The next uh, picture um, is, Please bear with me because this is close to home for some people that have gone through this. I'm gonna introduce you to my granddaughters. Um, if this is difficult for you, uh, please um, bear with me because it is a teachable moment. Let me introduce you to Alyssa. Alyssa was born two months premature. Her sister, Kylie, uh, was um, at a point to where they were both struggling. If you take a look at this point, give you an idea of her size, those are her father's hands. And it was at this moment where I stood back, a very vulnerable moment because we didn't know if they were gonna make them. You can see the wire, make it, we, you can see the wires that they were hooked up to. And at that moment, it was a significant moment for me because we had a significant young lady here. And I watched the doctors come in and all the specialists and they were checking this and checking that and making sure all their, their vitals were where they should be. And then in a reflective moment, I thought about the doctors because they said, this is where they are today and this is where we need to get them tomorrow. And then I thought about something very deep. I thought about never once did I hear the doctor say, there's no hope for these girls. Let's pull the plug. And that was a moment I thought about in education. And some of our kids were pulling the plug on them because they're behind, they're struggling, they need help. And are we truly practicing the belief that all kids have futures and all kids are gifted and talented. This little lady was gifted, she was talented, and she had a future. The other thing that I thought about 
is how did the doctors and, and nurses know what to do? Well, it was a teacher. Somebody had to teach them what to do in, in various situations. So indirectly, a teacher saved my granddaughter's life. So that's where the element of the book came out in one of the values is that no one gets anywhere without a teacher. So if we look at the girls today, they're 13, they're thriving. They're both gifted and talented. On the, on the upper left-hand screen is Kylie. Obviously, she got her dancing skills from her papa. <laughs> and then you have Alyssa on the other side. Very unique, very different, but both gifted and talented and have their own set of strengths. But if we weren't there at a time of need, they would not be where they are today and thriving because they're no longer on life support. They're achieving at a high level, but at the beginning, every day was a struggle, just like the kids that we have in our, our schools. Now, this next slide, you're trying to figure this out. I visited a school and I walked up to the front door and there was a young man standing there with a, with a um, plastic container filled with rose petals. He laid the rose petals down in the entryway and then he went in and he grabbed a two foot tall panda bear with a Kit Kat bar and a bouquet of flowers, stood in the, in the foyer area of the entrance to the school and had three deep of kids lined up behind him watching the event. The young lady walked up to the front door, stopped, looked down, saw the rose petals and thought, oh, this is a significant moment and it's all about me. And she seemed to walk across those rose petals in this specific graceful glide. She got to the young man, he looked her in the eyes, she looked him in the eyes and he said, will you go to the prom with me? And she said, yes, gave him a kiss on the cheek and balloons fell from the ceiling. The bell rang, everybody went to class. Then I went in to work with a group of student leaders and I asked them, tell me what it is that you do. And they said, well, we paint posters and we put on dances. Well, that doesn't seem very significant because what I believe you do is change lives and impact futures. And then I asked them how many kids, how many of you student leaders noticed the young man walking up to the rose petals wearing the camouflage jacket and the camouflaged hat? Not one hand was raised. That young man looked down at the rose petals, reading his face. It was as if he was saying, oh, significant moment. And it's not about me. He then proceeded to walk around the rose petals, trying not to step on a single petal. And then got up to the point to where the group was standing and Nobody would let him in. Nobody high-fived him. Nobody said hello. And I thought about it. What would that kid's day be like if there was no interaction? I was just hoping that there would be a teacher in the classroom that would say, good morning. How are you? How are things going? Is everything okay? I love your smile. Stay positive. Well, this is where we came up, again, in the in the student leader book about camo kids. Because if I thought about it, we had camo kids where the purpose of camouflage is to hide. And we have a certain number of kids that are, that essentially are hiding, that staying out of view, so nobody knows that they exist. So let's talk about who you celebrate. And when you have those celebrations, sorry for that little delay there, there was just a little music tied into the background. So I thought I'd entertain you, but anyway, we'll move on. So who do you celebrate? And when you hold the significant event, think about who gets in and theoretically, who has to stay outside? Meaning who gets on your gym floor or on your stage and who has to stay outside of that? Because what you put on that stage, you are communicating to students, parents, and teachers. This group 
is significant. This is who we value. This is who is important. So what we do traditionally, our, our moments of significance, our rose petal moments, is that think about who you celebrate. And in most cases, it's the royal family and the Austins. It's our gifted athletes. It's our top academic performers. It's the kids we really like. It's those kids that are doing really good things out there, like the Austins. But what we try to explore, and we encourage you to focus on taking your beliefs and values, and then creating celebrations that align for them so that you make sure that the Kylie's and the Lissa's and the Camo kids are, are a significant part of your school community. Who is significant on your campus? If you ask people which groups are significant, who is important, who's included, who do we celebrate? So think about this as we look into who gets into your spotlight. Who do you put in the spotlight of greatness on your campus? So we need to find a way to make sure that our spotlight includes these different types of kids. Because if we, how are we gonna connect them if I'm not included, if I'm not a part of your school? So now I'd like to be able to turn this over into Jessica and Scott as we, um, as we take a look at how they've created this magical place. And again, going back to their values and beliefs as a reminder. So as we move into the next um, series of slides, we're gonna be able to uh, see how honor and their belief system is integrated in everything they do. So without further ado, here are the real rock stars of this webinar. Scott Cavanius, Jessica De Levine, take it away. Thanks, Park. Um, appreciate that. And um, always, you know what, I've, I've heard some of those stories. Um, gosh, a, a, a few, well, way more than a few times now. And every single time I get something from them, um, and it's always a great reminder. So Park, thanks for being vulnerable and, and sharing your life experiences and kind of the, the learnings and the awakenings that you've had from that. Um, so uh, again, like we've been talking about through this webinar series is at Alvarado, everything that we do is based on a shared set of belief statements and core values. Um, and uh, for us at the end, um, when it comes to creating a culture of significance, um, we know that students come to school, um, our job is the learning business, right? And if we do not create um, a culture of significance where everyone matters and where everyone is on the same playing field and where everyone receives um, the same type of treatment, um, the same type of respect, um, uh, where it's an inclusive um, um, campus, um, that we know that that's going to impact the learning. And so for us at the end, if it's all about the learning, then we need to do every single thing that we can to connect every one of our students. And for every one of our students to feel, and I shouldn't even say feel, for every one of our students to know that they're on an even playing field. So when we created our belief statements, again, I've said this many times, but we brought um, Park in to, to help facilitate this process for us because it is a difficult process but it's also a very beautiful process. Um, so you can see these, um, these belief statements and core values, which just happen to be right behind me um, in my office right now as well. Um, we took these belief statements straight from, from Park's book. Um, and it was something that was done with all staff. Um, I did not just take the belief statements and say, here you go, you need to follow these. I showed them as an example and said, we need to create something similar to this. Um, and they just liked the ideas and, and reworded some of them. Um, and, and those became our, our four belief statements that you see there on the left. Um, on the right are our core values of honor. Um, honesty, ownership, never giving up, open-hearted and respect. Um, 
those two things there between those belief statements and those core values, again, drive everything that we do. So um, as we go on through the presentation, you'll see how, how those belief statements and core values are reflected in our celebrations, are reflected in our recognitions. Um, later on down the line, you'll see how these belief statements and core values also drive the learning inside the classroom as well. Um, Jessica, anything that you wanted to add to that? Um, no, I, I mean, I, I think that you wrapped it up pretty, um, pretty clearly. Um, I, I, if I could say something, it would just be, um, to add on to what you were saying, um, when you mentioned that students know they're on an even playing field, uh, the same goes for teachers as well. So when we honor all students' gifts and talents, they know they have a role and a purpose at school. They know their voices are heard and they know their voices are honored. Um, and again, same goes for our teachers. The way our team has really pulled together and um, just continue to support each other is because they know that everyone has a different set of strengths and, uh, and they just kind of find a way to, uh, to honor each other's voices. Thank you, thank you. Speaking of those voices, um, why don't you give us a little background of this setting because um, it was pretty amazing what these kids had to share. So this was our principal for the day event. Um, every year we have um, this big event in our district, um, and it's actually shared with two neighboring districts, and we do a thing called Principal for a Day. Um, this year, we were lucky enough to have Park as our principal for the day, and Park's very familiar with our school. Um, and our students have become very, our students and staff and community have become very familiar with rose petal moments. Um, creating rose petal moments for all, and finding opportunities to create rose petal moments. So when we found out the park would be our principal for the day this year, our students wanted to set up a rose petal moment for him. And so what happened was we had a room full of um, our, our leadership students and we have three different leadership programs on campus. We have ASB, we have Renaissance, and then we also have a program called Compassion. Um, our Compassion program is built up of gen ed and special ed students in a leadership um, kind of role. Um, ASB does what the typical ASB classes do, and Renaissance is built on um, student, staff, community recognition, things like that. So they have to hold their meetings in our multi-purpose room because um, our leadership, our leadership class, those three classes combined, is about uh, 110 students total. So we had to get them all in there to have this meeting, um, and we brought Park in. Um, he thought he was going in to say hello to the leadership class, but he came in for a rose petal moment. Um, and in that rose petal moment, we had 12 different students um, who had a rose for Park, and they each shared the way that our belief statements and our core values have impacted them or impact them on a, on a daily basis. Jessica, are you hearing this or no? Park, I'm not hearing it. Since we started learning for honor, I can feel myself becoming a better leader and overall a better person. I have come out of my shell and become more confident about myself using honor. This is why I love Alvarado. Alvarado believes all students are welcome. We help better people and overcome any challenges. Everyone can be themselves. We encourage this with our beliefs. All students are gifted and talented, and talented. All students have futures. Everyone needs a teacher, and every day is an opportunity to be the greatest version of me. Every classroom has these exact words up on the wall. We want all students to remind themselves that they are amazing and that they can achieve many goals. We want everyone to feel welcome, and to be honest, these words are very great for advice. You always be yourself, and if you don't like the way you were that day, change something. Be better tomorrow. I am Janelle Mathiano, and I am glad to share about my amazing school, Alvarado. Enjoy your visit. Okay. 
Um, Jessica, if you would set this up, you have. Oh, absolutely. Well, um, can I, I just want to say something about Janelle, who was a student who just spoke right there. Um, at the beginning of the clip, she talks about how when she started at Alvarado, and she's a seventh grader, um, which is, I mean, she's so eloquent, but she talks about how when she started at Alvarado, she had a certain understanding of herself um, that she has, and in conversations with her, she has touched on this several times, she had a certain understanding of the image that she had to live up to. And even at the beginning of that clip, she, she starts off by saying, a lot of the stuff that I had, um, like the acronyms that I'm used to from previous school sites, a lot of us think that we're too cool for that. Um, and the difference at Alvarado is that, yes, we have an acronym that represents our values, but the reason she's not too cool for it is because she, she doesn't see any hypocrisy in it. She sees that we live by it every single day, that it's represented in the classroom, it's represented by the teachers, it's represented through instruction. Um, so she, the way she kind of puts that together is, is really, really powerful. Um, and I just, going back to what Scott said about walking into that, that room and seeing a leadership group or three leadership groups that are combined 110 students, I think that the impact that it has on students is incredible. When you walk, when as a student, you walk into a leadership meeting and you see such a diverse group of students, uh, a lot of unlearning in regards to who students believe, once believed they were, um, a lot of unlearning happens there. And they start to kind of shed labels that they, that they don't feel they need to build these, you know, maybe they had these labels once to build these walls around them. And, um, and the fact that they can kind of shed all, all of that, walk into a leadership meeting and be their true selves is a representation of how those values and beliefs have, have impacted them. Uh, this next student is a student who, um, deals with a lot of anxiety and that anxiety has led him um to he he go uh let me see how to how to put this he goes through so much anxiety that he has become a selected mute so he um is an eighth grader now but as a seventh grader very few peers and very few adults on campus had ever heard his voice. And he will, he will communicate, you know, just through facial expressions and he will, he will show that he is hearing what you are saying, but um, very few have ever held a conversation with him because of what his anxiety has led to. And so this right here was one of the most beautiful moments I have ever experienced. Honor values that I think every student should have. The letter R in honor stands for respect. Respect is the values that impacted me the most. The first day I walked into AAS, I thought to myself, great, another, another hellhole in the game. I did not talk to anyone and I did not respect anyone because of past experience I had with school. And then one day I saw the world with principal hanging out with students and I thought to myself, well, well, at least we got a full principal. And then one student came up to me and said hi and I didn't say anything because of social anxiety, but he continued to hang out with me so I slowly accepted him as my best friend. If you are curious, his name is Samuel. And he teaches me a lot about kindness and respect and I started to respect respect people and be more talkative to people. And that's how I met a teacher. Her name is Miss Jacobs. She's very caring for me and helped me with anything I have trouble with. I thought, hey, this is not so that bad. This isn't that bad.
the fact that Andy joined us as a seventh grader last year, choosing to not speak because of social anxiety and because of past experiences. Um, the fact that he can stand up in front of a group that large and see himself as a leader and credit the people around him for teaching him about how to live through honor values is, I will never forget that moment. Yeah, super special moment. Um, Jessica, thank you for taking us through that. Um, and, and some of what we have represented here now is just about, um, and it says there, what you celebrate is what you value. Um, we wanna make sure that we are um, a very, very inclusive school um, that recognizes um, and celebrates everybody for their gifts and talents. When we find the opportunities, we do that. So what you'll see here at the red carpet is when our teachers are welcomed back to school. Um, our students come in, they celebrate them. Um, the bottom left-hand corner was um, a rose petal moment for one of our teachers. The top left-hand corner was one of our teachers being a thing that we call heart attacked, where it's a bunch of heart post-its and great things written about um, that person. Um, the bottom right-hand corner was a brand new PE teacher and um, our students are welcoming him with an, an Alvarado gift bag and survival kit. Um, and then another rose petal moment up in the top right hand corner. Um, we wanna set the tone right off the bat. We wanna talk about honor. We wanna talk about our belief statements. It always begins and ends with those two things. Um, again, our celebrations. We celebrate all students. Um, and what that means is, um, and I shouldn't necessarily say we celebrate all students, but our celebrations are based on our belief statements and our core values. Um, so rather than your typical student of the month who's receiving a 96% in the class, um, we have Matadors of Honor monthly, and those are based on the honor values. Um, in the left-hand side, we have our, you'll see our student recognition breakfast where our teachers get together and they do recognitions based on our belief statements and based on honor. Go ahead, Park, you can move on to the next one there. Um, again, welcoming our staff back, um, having big celebration to kick off the new year. Park always talks about, this is our, our happy new year celebration. Um, and and this, is, this is again, how we wanna set the tone right off the bat. Those yellow shirts on the back, you'll see, have our honor core values because we wanna make sure it's up and around everywhere as a reminder, not as our work on the wall, but as a reminder. Um, just again, more celebrations. This is again, celebrating our staff. Um, we have several celebrations for students, community, um, all of that. Um, again, always with the message, world's greatest, honor, belief statements. Um, and again, creating that culture of significance where everyone matters, where everyone is important, where our recognitions are based on, on our core values. Um, this was a rose petal moment. This was our custodian who had been at our school for over 25 years, who had decided to finally hang it up. Um, we stopped school early that day. We brought him out um, and walked him onto the stage where he walked out to the entire school campus, band playing for him, students singing for him. And he did his final drive off in his little orange cart there and students couldn't stop um, celebrating him. Um, it was also around the time of dismissal, so parents were able to join in. Um, it was a beautiful day. Thank you, Scott and Jessica. Um, these are the fundamentals of a world's greatest school, and you, can, and you can see as we walk you through this, how they play out at Alvarado so that you can see them in action, and again, this school has been in um, involved with this process for four years, and it's truly a magical place. Mark, is there one last thing I can mention about that? No, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I want to say about this is that, that I want to make sure that we hammer home is that we still have all of those celebrations. We still have all of those recognitions. But when Park talked about earlier the royal family, and I'll even share an example that I had um, recently, and this is after four years of doing this, um, our PTSA wanted to put on a thing called Honors Night, which we've done in the past. And that Honors Night always celebrated 
the top whatever percent of our school, of our students. And so of our 400 grad, uh, promoting students every year, we'd have about 120 of those students coming to be recognized for their GPA or for their attendance. Um, what we have changed it into now is any celebration that we do is gonna be based off our beliefs and values. So rather than having the principal's honor roll award, we had the all students are gifted and talented award. We had the every day's opportunity to be the greatest version of me. We had the honesty award, the ownership award, the never giving up award. Um, so that's how that should all play into this here. And so that's, that's what I really wanna hammer home is that we don't get rid of the celebrations and rituals and traditions and all of that, but we make sure that all of those things are based on our core values and beliefs. So sorry, Park. Oh no, thank you for uh, adding to that uh, because uh, it was uh, better than what I said. So thanks, Scott. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as we work through the layers and levels and the fundamentals of the world's greatest school, we've covered the first two now, shared values and beliefs and the culture of significant, significance. These layers and levels build upon one another where we've seen schools run into some roadblocks is they may have the shared values but not shared beliefs and then they're trying to get to a culture of significance and then along the way there's mixed messages that are coming out because the values and the beliefs are not necessarily aligned with creating a culture of significance and then as as we move next week into the structures and the systems, now we start getting into the real nitty gritty of the operations of running the school and how your policies, practices, procedures fall into line with your values and beliefs. Without the shared values and beliefs, you're gonna have a really difficult time building this because then as you've seen in many schools, it becomes artwork on the wall, and now we just have something, we, we have an innovation and um, that's going to be set up to be able to help in a, in a specific situation so that when something comes up, we say, that initiative over there, that innovation, that's something that we do in when the situation comes up instead of that something we do every single day. So on behalf of Scott and Jessica, we'd like to thank you for, for joining us. And we have two webinars left. Next Tuesday, we will be talking about creating a value and beliefs, uh, structures for, for our systems. And questioning, taking a look at what are your policies, practices, and procedures. We'd like to thank you again for being a part of this, taking time to explore the greatness of world's greatest schools, exploring the idea that kids' futures are at stake, understanding that we are faced with some very challenging and difficult times. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for who you are and what you do. Remember the kids need us, they need you. And they need a set of values and beliefs which will anchor, anchor who they are at home and who they are at school. And as Scott said, our kids are always at home. So, this ends the webinar. You're welcome to jump off if you want to. We're going to open it up for questions and answers. Uh, so let me move towards this and get back into Okay. Mark, are you able to see the chat box? Um, I am because Amy has some really beautiful things to say to you. <laughs> oh, well, it, she's my buddy. We go way back and uh, uh, love her to death. So let's, um, let's go ahead and um, open this up. I wanna 
unmute everyone. I beg your pardon. Amy. Yes, sir. It's so good to hear your voice. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you what great memories I have when I heard your voice and just thinking about uh, the work that we were able to do together. You have inspired me in so many ways. And when I saw this on Twitter, it's like, I have got to see what's up. And this is so, it's gonna apply so much to the work I'm doing right now, which is working with site administrators to work with teachers in having these environments in their own classroom as a start instructionally and so there's so many great ideas i've taken notes on and just really look forward to seeing uh, more about this as a quick note i attended alvarado oh wow um, in 1973 to 75 i had to write it out to figure out what the years so quite a while ago and seeing the the brick wall leading into the cafetorium, I don't know if you still call it that, that um, I lined up for dances on Friday afternoon. And inside there, just, I was like, I danced on that floor. I was there. <laughs> Thank you for taking me home again. Wow. wow. Thank you awesome. so much for sharing that. Um, you know, I, I think about my middle school days and every time I, I go anywhere near my middle school, all of those, um, all of those old feelings and memories come back. So to, to hear you share that, um, uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and, uh, um, you know, we love Alvarado. Um, we both kind of came up in the, in this community and, um, to be, be able to be back and, and servicing this community is, is, is an honor for us. Yeah, I think you guys, you went to Roland, didn't you, Amy? I did. I went to Fajardo, which I understand is now closed, but I also grad graduated from Roland. And um, yeah, thank you for doing Alvarado Proud. I, I follow you on Twitter now, so I'll, I'll be liking your things and resharing <laughs> because I just love the work you're doing. Awesome. Thank you. I got I got uh, beat up at Fajardo Park a couple times myself. So, oh my uh, gosh. So <laughs> was it near the um, the rocket? <laughs> the rocket slide the rocket slide i was just talking to my friend about that the other day that's the best yes uh -huh. well thank you amy for your kind words and it's so good to to hear your voice because i remember uh, way back when uh, when we were working together and uh, it was uh it was one of those beliefs uh, where you surround yourself with good people and great things happen and I definitely ran into a great one that I surrounded myself with during the Outer Oak days. So thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. So any other questions we have? Did you want to talk by the end? <laughs> I see a hand raised. Okay, anyone else who we see? Opportunity? Otherwise, we're, we're going to sign off. Mark, I think Larry has a new word. Okay. There you go, Dr. Biddle. You have a new word? He's still muted. Hold on. Okay, you should be there, Larry. You okay? Yeah, one of one of the John Maxwell coaches, a guy named Paul Martinelli, he's kind of his right arm, uh, phenomenal man, and and uh, he was sharing something just yesterday that I thought really kind of puts uh, a, a stamp on what's going on in the world and what's what's been going on. And then I'm I'm going to wind up with a brand new word, which is who we all are. But he says, you know, Amazon took over retail without owning any stores. Uber took over the taxi industry without owning a single car. Apple and Spotify have taken over music with no stores or artists signed to their name. Netflix has taken over movies and TV without ever showing a single movie in a theater. LinkedIn has taken over job searching and hiring. 
Expedia and TripAdvisor have taken over the travel industry. So what's happened is we've gone from basically analog to digital everything and computer driven, which leads us to our new word of who we are. It's a brand new word created by the John Maxwell team called coachpreneur, like entrepreneur, but coachpreneur. And the power of it is, uh, is we're, we're after solutions and the world's greatest has them. And, you know, there's a never more, more now than ever, there's a hungry population out there. And, uh, you know, none of us got into education for the money. We've got into education to change who America is and who our kids can become. So welcome to being a coachpreneur. Put it on your business card. <laughs> I love that. That's a great word. <laughs> love it, Larry. It's, it's one word, coachpreneur. <laughs> Wait, I didn't, it didn't trademark it. Let's let world's greatest trademark it, Park. <laughs> we can work on that. <laughs> I know. Might as well. What a, what a phenomenal session. Y'all, uh, we are leaving the mountains and heading to the coast. So well, we'll be down at sea level. Be safe. Be I safe. I know. We got our masks. <laughs> well, I'll have a... Have a phenomenal day, and uh, thanks for all you do and who you are. Remember, last week was Teachers of Education, Teachers of the year, a Week, and this week is Nurses, but no nurses got anywhere without teachers, which is what Park was saying. Hello. <laughs> wow. Exactly right. No one gets anywhere without teachers. doesn't matter who they are, surgeons, anybody. We all know that, and that's the power. So love you all. Take charge. Thank you. Don't let, don't let anybody steal your dreams. <laughs> you got that right. Thanks, Larry. Always appreciate the insight, my friend. Um, All right. Enjoyed it. Everybody, Bye. please be safe. Take care of yourself. Uh, we have uh, a big job to do. We need everybody around here. So uh, any closing words, Jessica, Scott, before we check out? No, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yes, thank you for your time. I um, love speaking about this process, and I, I'm so uh, so appreciate that people are, are joining us. Well, I just can't wait to where you get to shine with uh, uh, belief-driven learning. That's where the real magic takes place. So, uh, again, thank you, everybody. Amy, you made my day. So glad to hear from you. Anybody, anyway, everybody, it's... Uh, Take that greatness within and, and bring it out and make a difference in somebody's life. So thank you, everyone. And uh, we will see you Tuesday, next Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.